here's the key, right? Here's the key for more downside. You see the bottom channel here, right? You see the candles low from July the 24th. If it loses that July 24th candle low, there's another 12 points in the trade. Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the AxesOfTrader.com uh, nightly wrap-up show. Hope everybody is doing well. Crazy day. I mean, absolutely crazy day. We'll get to that in a second. Uh, if you are brand new to the channel, thank you very much for tuning in. Uh, like, subscribe, share, uh, all that good stuff to support uh, the unbiased cause of technical analysis. That's all we do here. We don't guess, we don't forecast, we don't have a bias, we don't love a stock, hate a stock. We just like channels, right? Whether it's long, short, or indifferent, uh, we like channels. So let's talk about today, right? The last time we spoke was on Tuesday. Uh, Wednesday, yesterday, I had to do something for my mom. I had to drive into Brooklyn, so I didn't have a chance to uh, drive. I didn't have a chance to record the video. Uh, you guys remember yesterday, the day before, I the big number was coming out last night was uh, Meta. Uh, if you guys remember, they were coming in for the 320s, 325 calls. Uh, a buyer came in. Let me just show you guys. A buyer came in right before the close, right before the close, right here. A buyer stepped in with the $600,000 premium of the 327.50 calls. And here was the pivots. Uh, here were the pivots to uh, that was yesterday. Again, congratulations for you guys, not only who uh, had, uh, had uh, Meta overnight, uh, but for those of you guys who traded after hours, uh, 306, obviously you saw uh, the stock went to uh, 326, 327, just a big, big move. So everything started spiking today. As you can imagine, um, what we talked about, the Qs reclaiming back 380.50s. You guys remember from Tuesday's video? 380.50s on the Qs. So everything started spiking, right? Everything, way over their numbers. And either the hardest day you're ever going to uh, ever trade is a day that the market is spiking well outside of their average range to their top of their channel. And that's what we saw with a lot of stocks today. But everything was all good, like really, really all good. And if you see here, like the early pivots, uh, the early pivots in the morning, and I, just to give you an idea, I just want to kind of segue to exactly what happened after, right? You have Tesla, you have, uh, excuse me, you had Google, 131.20 needs to build, right? Google absolutely, uh, absolutely exploded, right? Here is Google, absolutely exploded, took out 31.20, went to 33, right? Everything was going one by one. Uh, Tesla never got the 273. We'll get to Tesla in a second. This little one, uh, GOT, $4 needs to build. Not a big move, but again, who knows me? Is this a big move? Stock went about almost 20 cents. Is it a big move on its $4 stock? I don't know. I don't trade this crap. Uh, NVIDIA, big move on NVIDIA, right? Big, big move. They were, again, they were coming for the 520s, 525s, 466 needs to confirm, reject it twi three uh, twice, right? So here is the pivot on, here is the whole pivot on, uh, this, you see this whole 466? Right, 466, 466, 466. Finally got above 466, went to 473. Just an absolutely huge move there. Uh, Riot didn't do anything. It went up like 15 cents before it died. I uh, actually like Mara as a short tomorrow. We'll get to the we'll get the individual names in a second. Uh, letter U, 4520 needs to build. Right here was letter U. So it took out the 4520, went to 47. So like wow, everything is just absolutely exploding. Huge moves, one after another. Even AI, you know, we caught this a little bit late. Uh, I bought this thing on the 4320s break, went into the 70s, it was already up like two and change. Uh, you know, not a bad trade, but nothing nothing crazy there. And then things started to change, right? Things started to change. You see this, guys, right? Let's revert to attention of what happened after. So, so a lot of big moves, right? A lot of really, really big moves. Uh, everything was going well. Close your eyes for a second. I want to make a dramatic effect here, right? Close your eyes for a second. So everything was good, right? Everything was good. We're gapping. Everybody's loving the, you know, loving life. The air feels crisper. The food tastes better. You're better looking. You, you grew. I think your penis grew a little bit. Everything's all right in the world. And then slowly but surely, you started getting a little bit of news coming out out of Japan. I don't know what the news was didn't sound crazy 
Didn't sound like it was anything really, really important. The day before uh, the FOMC meeting was a complete dud. That's a good thing. So he's thinking to yourself, all right, you know, a little pullback in the queues, right? A little pullback in the queues. First red bar we've seen the whole day, right? Not even a big deal. Got stuffed here into supply. Not a big deal whatsoever. Not at all. We're about to take out highs. Ah, one little dip here, but it's still holding the bottom of the range here, right? What can go wrong? We're starting to rally again, right? Held the bottom of the range here really, really nicely. Got rejected at the Bollinger Band. Follow me here, right? Nothing's going on. Nothing poor is going on. This market is strong. We're definitely gapping up to tomorrow's PCE number. Bears never learn. Bears never learn. Bears never learn. Uh-oh, we're starting to get to the bottom of the range here. What's happening here? Nothing. We're going back higher. And then next thing you know, right? Next thing you know, we'd start taking out highs, start taking out highs. Everything is rallying. Everything is all good. And then the world just ends. Just literally the world just ends here. Just absolutely ends. And the, the craziest part about the market is, and always remember that, you could be prepared 100%, right? We, we, the, the good part about it is where at least we were in the webinar after, you know, after the morning session, we were pretty much in cash. Like li literally we were in cash because there was nothing left to buy. Everything was so over-exaggerated to the upside. Then we started, you know, we started seeing, you know, the cues give back the 81, give back the 80. That 80 was a big number we talked about in the last couple of days. Everything was, you know, starting to look heavy. And then next thing you know, the earth, literally the earth just opened up and just swallowed the bulls whole. And at the end result was just an absolute nasty, nasty reversal. You're talking about the queues going from nearly 385 to going to 375 within an hour, hour and a half. Just an absolute, uh, just incredible, just absolutely incredible. And in the process, it lost the five day moving average, the 10 day moving average. And now we closed at the bottom of the range here. And when you look at when you look at tonight, right? You look at tonight and you see the earnings, right? You have Intel, okay? You have Intel gapping up on some pretty good numbers. You got Roku gapping up on some pretty good numbers. You have uh, Ford, right? I think Ford now they're giving back a little bit, uh, a little bit as well. Uh, ENPH uh, getting, you know, ENPH uh, getting a little bit hit here. Uh, ENPH getting hit here after the close. Uh, EN. PH, it's getting hit here after the close. But the key right now, if if you're looking, right, if you're looking at the market tomorrow and you're seeing that the futures tick up a little bit just because of Intel, and clock had good numbers also, right? So you see some of the semiconductors, you see some of the se semiconductors spiking up the queues. But guys, let, let me just let me just put it to, put it to you this way, the best way I can I can say it. Do you guys remember a couple of weeks ago we had a two percent, we had a two percent uh, move down in the queues, right? And then the next day, the market gapped up. Under no circumstances do you ever buy a gap up after a huge reversal in the queues, especially if they close at the bottom of the range. So tomorrow, a lot of people are going to, if the, if the queues gap up tomorrow, there's going to be a lot of people buying this gap again. Listen to the data we have. We sold the gap up 10-point reversal to the highs to the lows within, within an hour and a half. In the process, we lost a 5- and a 10-day moving average. If you're buying, if you're buying a gap and go tomorrow, at least in, in the initial candle, again, nobody knows what's gonna happen towards the end of the day. But if you're buying literally that first candle, you're buying it, there's a good probability you're buying stocks into supply. And if you remember what happened, right? If you guys remember what happened the day after, right? There was a massive reversal and we had a two an additional two day sell-off. So you gotta be very, very careful. The big number, right? The big number for tomorrow on the queues is going to be the 20 day moving average, right? You see this 374 level folks, any close, the bulls, and again, this is not a, any interpretation here. This is not room for discussion. If the bulls give up the 20 day moving average, you can see here exactly how many times they held, right? They held the 20 bounce, held the 20 bounce, right? Held the 20 bounce. So we, we've seen so many evidence of the bulls holding that, that 20 day moving average. But if the bulls fail and the queues get below, especially on a closing basis, get below 374, it's going to be a problem. Okay, there's going to be an absolute problem. And the last thing you want to do is pretend that it's not happening because technical analysis is real, gravity is real. And if we, if the queues lose the 374 level, especially on the close going into uh, going into next week, there is going to be a different narrative for the weekend update. So again, if you are a perma bull, 
Just watch out for the level. If you are a perma bear, watch out for the level. If you're a trader like myself and a trader like all of us in, in the webinar, uh, we don't care which way the market goes, right? Everybody loves a bull market. I love a bull market. But again, as they all know, stocks take the what? Stairs up and the elevator down and that 374 becomes a major line in the sand. So let's continue, right? Let's continue the pivots. So everything is all good and then things start getting hit right? So Microsoft, remember Microsoft uh, got beat up on earnings. They held the 333 level, right? So once we started seeing the market get hit, the certain big levels started coming to play. Microsoft, 333, if it builds below, can flush. But more important, not only the flush, it can confirm the 50-day moving average. Guys, look at Microsoft, right? Look what happened to Microsoft here. It took out the 333 that was yesterday's low, confirmed the 50-day moving average, and this is the first close underneath the 50-day moving average from Microsoft. If this thing starts confirming the channel all the way back down to the July lows, this thing is going lower. Watch Microsoft for tomorrow. Uh, Tesla. What are we going to say about Tesla? It hasn't been said already. The greatest stock ever. I, I, I think I said the word 261 in the webinar today over the last couple of days, probably 800 times. Easily, 800 times. I, if you didn't know by now what the pivot was on, on Tesla... I don't know what you were looking at, but 261 was a major, major deal. So Tesla loses the 261 level, right? Look And look at this wash, right? Look at this wash, guys. So it loses this whole 261 level, just gets absolutely slammed, closes pretty much at the low of the day. Here's the key, right? Here's the key for more downside. You see the bottom channel here, right? You see the candles low from July the 24th. If it loses that July 24th candle low, there's another 12 points in the trade, right? There's definitely another 12 points in the trade. You have room all the way to the 50-day moving average of three, uh, 243, 245. Watch Tesla tomorrow, guys. For all you guys who are not short, watch Tesla. If this thing starts losing this bottom channel here, this thing can have room to the 50-day moving average. Don't believe a stock can get to the 50-day moving average? Just ask Mr. Sophie what happened when it lost this 50-day moving average. Very, very important level. Uh, Tesla, definitely on watch tomorrow. They started coming for the 250 weeklies, expired tomorrow. 240s, they started rolling in uh, for next week's expiration. So definitely, definitely uh, watch Tesla as well for tomorrow. Coinbase, congratulations for all you guys who uh, caught Coinbase. 95.70 if it builds below can flush. Here was Coinbase, right? It took out the 95.70, just got absolutely wrecked right into the 20-day moving average of 9180s. Guys, watch the 20 day tomorrow on coin. If coin starts losing the 20 day after today's, you know, after today's initial death, you know, punch to the ribs, if this thing loses the 20 day, kind of a mirror image with the NASDAQ 100, this thing could get hit as well. So keep an eye on that as well. So Tesla got hit, Microsoft, everything got hit. But again, you can't watch everything, but boy, oh boy, some phenomenal washes uh, into the close. Congratulations for all you guys who are still long, excuse me, still short, uh, whether runners, half size, whatever the case may be. Hopefully we'll get extension of today's action. Um, I don't want to say I messed up Meta. Uh, from the outside looking in, it feels like I messed up Meta. I, I shorted Meta the first time uh, below 318. It only went down 50 cents, right? It went down 50 cents. Um, I didn't obviously take any off. Uh, so I got stopped out break even, made a cup of coffee on it. And unfortunately, later in the day, when everything got pulled, I wasn't in the trade anymore, which sucks, but you know, here it is. So here was the here was the 318 pivot. And unfortunately, it just it just it just I don't really want to say it faked me out. It just wasn't ready. But when the queues got pulled, obviously Meta got pulled and damn thing went only one of only down seven dollars. But you know, it is what it is. Let this be my worst problem. Uh other than that, that's it. Other than that, that's it. So we're watching tomorrow uh Met, we're watching tomorrow uh Microsoft below today's channel. Tesla below last week's lows. Uh, let me give you guys a couple of more names. Look at Mara, right? Look at Mara. Mara is sitting on the 20-day moving average. If Mara starts losing the 20-day tomorrow, man, this thing could get hit. Look at Disney, right? We've been talking about Disney for what, about three, four days? The flag just continues to build. If this thing just loses the bottom channel of Disney, this thing could get hit as well. So again, guys, be careful of the gap up into supply. Again, when you're a brand new trader, you don't know the difference between, you know, day one or day two. Everything's the same to you. But I'm telling you, after a big reversal, the last thing you want to do is trade that initial gap and go. Most of the time, you're going to get stuck into supply. And what happens when stocks hit supply? 
It means emotional buyers and meaning technical sellers, yada, yada, yada. Here we are. Guys, have a great night, everybody. God bless. Stay safe. We have a very specific plan for tomorrow. Um, and if it plays out like, it, you know, I think it could, we could get an aggressive uh, day two continuation. Let's hope, right? Let's hope. We can only be prepared. Guys, have a great night, everybody. God bless. And I'll see you on the field tomorrow. Take care.